And joining us in the studio for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Stephen Gambert, Professor of Medicine and Surgery at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Director of Geriatric Medicine at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. My pleasure, Jeff. Thank you. We're here to talk about successful aging. And I have an idea what unsuccessful aging right, would be. Right. What, what do you mean by successful aging? Well, uh, aging is a lifelong process. Unfortunately, many people don't think about their aging until they're elderly. And at that point, they may have already accelerated what uh, their genetics has really um, you know, been behind their aging. I mean, they may have developed diseases that they may otherwise never get. So we really have many things that we can do to lead more healthy, functional lives and to have more successful aging. Is, so, it, is it one of those things where our, our genetic makeup sort of sets a path, but, but your lifestyle choices can, can take you off that in, right. in one direction or the other? Right. We all have a genetic... Um, message, so to speak, that will allow us to age in different ways. But many things we do, I'll give you some examples. Uh, the best thing you can do if you're a smoker is stop smoking. It's never too late. Well, I hear that from 80-year-old people. You know, well, I've already been doing it for 60 years. Well, we can show scientifically benefit from stopping at any time. And it's never too early to tell your children and grandchildren not to start smoking. Very important. It not only can accelerate your normal aging, and this is an example of all the things I'll tell you, but leads to certain diseases. In the case of smoking, emphysema, bronchitis, and lung cancer cancer. Ultraviolet rays that we get from the sun. Uh, beautiful day to day, you sit outside and get a nice tan, it's going to have payback. You end up with premature wrinkling and eventually skin cancer. And it's both the UVA and UVB. And with all the climate change and all you hear about it, we have a, a dissipating ozone layer, meaning we're exposed to more ultraviolet rays than we ever were before. So it's more serious that we use sunscreens, avoid the sun as best we can. Noise. Um, we all, you and I, all of us, will lose high-frequency hearing as we get older. We call that a normal part of aging, presbyacusis, okay? And what happens is we have the ability to have pretty much what Mother Nature meant us to have or accelerate it to the point where I wouldn't understand you. It would be uh, sounding like mumbled. Consonants are high-frequency sounds. And what happens is when you lose that, speech sounds mumbled. So you hear many older people just, uh, oh, I don't want to go to play bingo. I don't want to watch television. It becomes more difficult for communication. And the sad thing is we have younger people now who have accelerated their hearing loss to the point where they're beginning to have clinical problems. Those MP3 players can cause e major even damage. Even the little earbuds. That's that right. If you have them too dangerous. loud. Right. Yeah. So uh, these are major issues that we have control of. Um, having a good attitude is very important. Uh, we know that stress plays a key role in how we will age. And we always say that we can't prevent all stress, but we can develop coping mechanisms to have us deal with it better. We have these hormones, which are known as catechols, distress hormones. And what they do is actually play a role in how our cells will die. Uh, genetically, we all have a pattern called apoptosis, and we will lose, you'll have less brain cells when you're done with the show today, okay? We lose it. It happens every, every time. Month, that's right, yeah. every time. But we have more than we need. We have a reserve capacity. And the same happens for your heart as well and other areas of the body. And when you become under stress, your norepinephrine, one of those stress hormones, rise, and we have an accelerated loss of cells. So this, over a lifetime, plays a major role in how functional we'll be. So these are some of the normal aging changes that we do control. But there are diseases that we don't need to get. Simple vaccinations. Uh, we hear about the zoster vaccination, the, the uh, pneumonia vaccination, the flu vaccine. You'd be surprised how many older people just don't get those. So what we really need to do is remind people you can prevent. We can pick up problems early. Uh, blood pressure screening, mammography for breast cancer, um, colonoscopy. These are things we need to really pay attention to and make sure that we take control of. But uh, some of the things we talk about are, are cosmetic. If, if you're out in the sun, you're going to wind up with more wrinkles. Does it literally go deeper than that? I mean, is there a an aging process. I mean, you look at somebody and say, well, they, they look good for 60 or right. don't look good for 60. Is there an internal measure? Is there any kind of, uh, you know, uh, objective way to look at it? Well, we all will look different as we get older. I mean, uh, jaw structure changes, your nose gets broader, we lose about two inches in height, and we do expect to have wrinkles. There are changes in our subcutaneous fat. Our body does change. Okay, so short of having plastic surgery, we all will have some wrinkles and changes, okay? But what I'm talking about is accelerated aging, where you'll have very much more advanced. You'll look 80 when you're 50 in terms of sun exposure. And what I really worry about is crossing over from normal aging to the diseases, in this case, skin cancer. 
Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question about aging, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. Let's zero in on diet a little bit. What, right. what should people generally do differently? It's one of those major things we have under our control and uh, what we need to be aware of. We need a well-balanced diet, but we also need to make sure we have certain nutrients that are important for our health. Calcium is one of them, fiber another, vitamin D. We're learning more about the positive and beneficial effect of omega-3. A lot of people are confused about the omega oils because people say have omega oils, but there are are omega-3 oils, which are anti-inflammatory, that's good, and we have omega-6s, which are pro-inflammatory, that's bad. I didn't know there was such right. a thing. Omega-3s you find in, in fish. But 6s are also in that. So you need to look at the balance of the percentages. For example, olive oil. Olive oil has a ratio of 17 to 1, the bad, number 6, okay, to, to the uh, good, really? the 3. No kidding. Canola oil has a ratio of two to one. So if you look at just that in itself. But olive oil's been so, it's trendy. You want well, the... yeah, but canola oil has a better ratio. So in terms of, there are many, it's too complicated to get into now, yeah. but um, we need to eat uh, well-balanced meals and make sure we get adequate nutrients. Fiber is a big one in order to maintain our health, and I won't go into detail with it. Uh, Calcium is important for our bone health. And as we get older, we do have changes in our bones. Uh, it's interesting, there's a centenarian study that looked at people who turned 100. And we right now have 50,000 people over 100. And by the year 2040, it's been said that we'll have 250,000 people over 100. We have 1.9 million people over 90. That'll go to 9 million people. And the biggest disability that older people of today have, and particularly the elderly women, are bone health. So when someone falls, they have a much higher rate of getting a hip fracture, leading to disability, ending up in a nursing home. So a lifelong of looking at your diet, making sure you have an adequate amount of calcium, appropriate exercise, another key thing, helping to maintain your muscle mass, and helping with your balance is also very important with your successful aging. The, the increase in, in the number of people in their 90s and beyond is, is a success story. We, we must be doing something right. We must be. However, uh, you asked about diet. One of the big, I'm going to call it a plague, so to speak is obesity, okay? And um, this is the first generation, and I think the audience needs to really pay uh, attention to this. This is the first generation where young children are expected to live less than their parents. This has never happened in the history of mankind, and it's said it's because of the obesity leading to insulin resistance and diabetes. So if the audience can do one thing for successful aging, it really is to pay attention to not becoming obese. Let's uh, take a phone call. This is Bob in Baltimore City. Bob, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Hello, Bob. You're on. Yes. My question is uh, vitamin D is very important for good health. How do you compromise or balance that with the amount of sunscreen you should use? How much a direct exposure versus sunscreen? Right. Great, great question. And to set it up further, you, your body, your skin creates vitamin D when it's exposed to sunlight. Right. We, we need a little bit of sunlight to convert the, uh, it's actually a cholesterol product that goes through the body. It's converted to vitamin D3. And then what happens is as it goes to the liver, it becomes five times more potent and it goes to the kidney, becomes another five times more potent. So the body is able to make it stronger and stronger. But the fact is what I find I'm doing is recommending supplements of vitamin D to most of my patients. And uh, we, need, we, we know if we take a blood test that we have a certain level that we look for, between 30 and 50 nanograms. So a physician can get a level, determine where you are, and if you need to, we can give a supplement. Most people, the good news is if you take 1,000 international units of vitamin D, and we recommend D3, which is more of the natural chemical structure. It uh, appears to work better for bone health, that uh, within a year, almost everybody has that level that we want. Let's okay. squeeze in one more phone call. George in Anne Arundel County. George, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Thank you. Sure. I, I, I thought it was worth uh, noting, I'm no expert, but uh, I believe that an important issue on oils is whether the oil has been heated and to what temperature. Right. And so uh, perhaps the uh, uh, olive oil versus canola oil uh, uh, controversy might change uh, depending on how it's used. George, right. thank you. Right. Um, there have been a very few studies that have looked at that in terms of the high temperatures, uh, but in regular cooking temperature, both of those appear to be about equal in terms of the risk factors for that. I just have half a minute. Let's wrap up uh, maybe on, on the vitamins. What, 
What, what should somebody in middle age or older be, be doing? The first question I say to them is, what do you mean by a vitamin? People ask me all the time. If you mean a simple daily vitamin, there's probably no harm to taking it. I would advise people not to take these mega vitamins unless they speak to their physician. We can not become toxic. But just in closing, I want to say that one of the things we need to be aware of is that as we get older, many problems present atypically, nonspecifically. And what we need to say is if you, for any reason, are not in your usual state of health, you need to take that seriously. That's it a may- good place to leave it. And we're out of time. Dr. Stephen okay. Gambert, University of Maryland, thank you for being with thank us. Thank you, Jeff. Your health segments are a co production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System. 